I've always been fascinated by wireless energy. I still remember the first time I read about Tesla's wireless energy experiments as a young child and the fascination and magic of the concept of wireless energy. I've done quite a few past experiments with wireless electricity, mostly powering uh, LEDs, uh, CFL bulbs uh, with Tesla coils, or running small motors using uh, high voltage static electricity. I've also had a lifelong fascination with lasers, and I've always wanted to do some experiments using a laser to transfer energy over a great distance. A while back, I got this small laser cube. It's completely portable and has a built-in battery pack. One of the things that makes it ideal for these experiments is that I can custom control the colors as well as the scan patterns using my iPhone. This feature turned out to be really useful, and it was a lot of fun experimenting with different scan patterns and shapes and seeing how they interacted with the solar panel's ability to pick up this energy. These first tests were done with a polycrystalline solar panel and a USB-powered LED bulb. This simple setup worked really well in these first tests, but I would like to try again with a monocrystalline solar panel because I have a hunch that will work even better. After these first successful tests, the next step was to find a large open area and do a long range test. I located a spot where the beam can safely terminate up on this hillside. And according to Google Earth, it's just over 870 feet of distance between the laser projector and this spot on the hillside. Okay, so we're transferring energy and we've got the bulb lit. This is a tremendous distance. I need to try other colors, test other settings. After this first successful test, I decided to try again with a tighter scan pattern. So I narrowed the whole area of light down to just the size of the solar panel. And while it was much brighter and did cover the entire surface of the solar panel, the bulb would not even light. I ran into this same issue even doing short range testing. And at one point I thought maybe the solar panel had quit working or the bulb because I had a really bright, nice scan pattern covering the entire surface of the solar panel and it just was not lighting the bulb. After a frustrating few minutes of trial and error, I stumbled onto a new scan pattern that worked quite well. This leads me to believe there are a lot of variables in the system. It might be that the solar panel's USB-DC output works better when pulsed at certain frequencies. While I do have a few practical applications for technology like this, at this point it's more about just having a fun time doing trial and error experimentation.